Well, we started off, I was a one car garage and I had so much dust in the basement so I converted this over to my wood shop and uh, it's worked out very well for me. It's a probably 24 by 13 and uh, it's holding up all my shop equipment, what little I have, but it's been real nice. And, uh, just what else do we need in a little homeowner's workshop other than the basics? Well, the cabinets were something I run across at a very good deal of, from a man that died in this. He was a professional cabinet maker, and someone told me they was getting rid of some stuff, and, and I got approximately 20 feet of better off cabinets for nothing, just to haul them off, just about. And I put the tops on them and raised them up about three inches higher, and then I uh, put a three-quarter inch board for the top, and it's worked out very well for me. And then I keep the saws that going to dust. I have a, a dust collector that I put on the outside, and I put all my saw uh, and sanders that where I can have just on one side of my dust collector, my miter saw, my little old bench sander, my dust collector hooks up to my planer and the, to the table saw and to the uh, drum sander thing, which is very, very necessary to have when fooling with a cutting in tarsia. And then on the right, the other side is I have my scroll saw with the light and I can have a use the bench as my table as I could and just lay out my pieces of the pattern that I'm making. And it's uh, worked well. And then I save my drops of wood. I ain't as conservative on saving my drops as Hans is, but uh, and then I use them to for pieces to make up my patterns of different woods. And as you can see on the wall, whatever George does, I try to copy it. And he's got a lot of this on this back porch, so I just put mine. I wasn't allowed to put them all in the house, so I just put them out here in the shop, and this worked out great for me. I call this my little museum wall. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's done great. And some of my patterns aren't related to animals, so to speak, but I like old cars, so I have uh, one end there with some patterns of different models of cars, and you know, I cut them out. And I especially love 40 Fords. And, uh, I wish I had to learn the woodwork earlier I could have been much more well off to stay with wood and I would with cars but we learn someone well, else long time ago you could buy coats in a much bigger leader bottle yeah, once you go up there closer to the wall a bottle like that is antique now because they don't make them but Many years ago, they made like a quart-sized Coca-Cola, and I just saved a Sprite and a Coke bottle and put them up there. This right here is a old cheese box out in the country stores, and a long time ago, they sold hoop cheese, which is very good cheese, and that's what hoop cheese came in. And up at the top is a, a metal crate that they toted the drinks in. This one happens to be a 7-Up. 
which in today's collectors, is, people really enjoy those. And uh, up at the top of that is a little old, old timey scrub board that the lady would use just to do a small item, maybe the towels or some small piece of cloth to clean. And naturally, up top is a bracing bit. To the right of it is a axe that is cut, made to cut shingles wood, wooden shingles like cypress or cedar that you see up around. Below that is a set of ice tones where that ice man used to go around the houses and leave a nickel, a 10, a 15 cent piece of block of ice and he had access to just walk in the house and put it in an old timey refrigerator. To the bottom of that is a vulcanizer stand that when you had inner tubes in cars and you would take that little kit and get a nail hole in a tire, you would just take it off scrape it, burn it off with a little glue, and then you put your own seal in it and start the process of putting the tire back together. And up above that is a set of scales that they would weigh cotton out in the field. And that is called a peep on the right-hand side. And the farmers didn't want to pay nothing for them poor people to pick the cotton. So they would cheat them because they knew the people that was picking the cotton would put rock or water or anything on the cotton to make it weigh more. So the farmer would drill out that pea in the bottom and add extra weight in it and it would counteract the scale from being accurate from 100 pounds it may be 90 pounds or something like that. And to the right of that is a Coca-Cola where people used to make their own little drinks. They would call them soda pops or in the south or what have you. And that's a cork or uh, would put the cap, snap the cap right on the top of the uh, bottle. Down below it is where you used to buy buck oil in a quart jar, which is a collector's thing today. And they even had that in a wire rack like they do the coats. To the right of that is a, a wheat uh, blade sling that curved and they would cut wheat, grab a hold of it and then cut it as, as you walked out in the field. To, and then a turning boat which a logger would use to turn logs in a sawmill when they was cutting slabs. Then an old timey hat rack that you put your hat on to make it feel, to keep the shape. And then up tight was old single tree that the mule would have and put, pull the plow or wagon or whatever they may have. And then you had a collar, which I don't have a collar up there, but in the head. And that thing on the right was a teenager attentioner which has happened to be a straight edge uh, razor blade strike that the barber would use in the barber shop, but dad used them for other things. Mm -hmm. uh, below that is a 60 horsepower flathead engine with a push rod, inverted uh, caps for uh, different parts of the car and then it's got some pistons with the rings and those different kind had rod bearings in them. The Model A's had like babbits where they would literally pour the uh, bearing in. Then to the right of it is a little airplane that I made for my grandson. It's metal and wood and it's replica of a steerman. It's a tricycle and I bent all the rods to pedal it like a pedal. And then uh, down on the bottom there by the charcoal bag, do you have that? Yep. 
That's a, that's an old ice maker ice box, which is people were early with like the ice man would come and deliver you a box of ice for those that didn't have electricity. And many, many of your homes in the country did not have electricity in the 40s and early 50s. The, the signal light is a very collectibles item. That one is all metal. Today they're plastic and fiberglass. So, but the real ones were, uh, were made out of steel. And one thing about a signal light, those that are vertical like that, the red is always on the top. Red, amber, or orange, and then green. That has really helped out people that are colorblind. Mm -hmm. Back in, in the 40s, uh, trucks and cars was very nice to own because people were so used to horse and buggy. But Henry Ford came out with making vehicles that where the average people could own one. But today, even these tags that on a, when you can find a matching pair, the front and the back, especially on the car, that they cost about like four hundred dollars to get a matching pair. And the cars in the forties were the first year that they had seal beams, and they also have. Uh, hydraulic brakes. Before that, they came out with, I mean, uh, mechanical brakes. Hydraulic is what we have today. The motor is, was a flathead, water cool, with uh, all those internal valves. There's no uh, overhead valves on these. And uh, 85 horsepower. And they was known to run real good, so around 100 mile an hour if you could hold it. But so many of the roads were dirt or halfway paved, and you couldn't drive them very fast. Uh, the truck itself only came in a deluxe model, uh, where the cars had uh, standard and deluxe. Pickup was only a standard. The grill makes the difference in other things. And as it goes, and if you can pick it up and hear the sound, that's the, for the old timers, they really love to hear a flathead motor. So many of us modified them a little bit because they first come out with a six volt system, which we put a converter in it to use 12 volt cranking. That makes it crank so much better, especially when the motors get wore out. They don't have no compression. No six volt batteries will not last long. But now, a flathead motor was known to get warm in bumper to bumper traffic on the day's highway. Uh, that happens to be a two kit that came with a vehicle when you purchased it. They had a Duana sack. Some people call it a crook sack with that forwarding signal on it. The tools he had made, he had forward stamped on them. And today, when you go to these car shows for early V8 Fords, they judge it. One of the things is you have to have a tool kit because that's what they came out with. The screwdrivers are made a certain way. And 
they look at that, gives you a reference book, the operating manual, and the tools today you can buy at the truck itself sold for about $600 or maybe a little lesser. But the two kit today cost about three on a dollar if you get the whole complete set, or maybe a little less. Mm -hmm. And the inside, the pickups came with the gear shift and the floorboard. The cars came with the gear shift on the column. It was the first year that they had there. They had uh, uh, a little vent on the outside that you push to make it air conditioned. They had a, a automatic throttle uh, cruise control. We call it a throttle cable that you pull out. And it even had a trepometer or whatever the word is on the speedometer that would give you your mileage of how far you went even in 1940. Alright, let's uh... This is a, a 40 Ford Deluxe business coupe. They came out with an opera coupe and a business coupe. The salesman would use a business coupe because it would, the trunk would hold so much and this particular car I've had the motor's been beefed up a little bit it runs real good and uh, but it's a uh, the whole car didn't cost but six hundred and something dollars brand new yeah. I don't know I ain't gonna say how much I paid for the tires probably a third of what the car cost but, uh, it's a, it's just basic like the others. We uh, we do different things to them, like this shield there. Is, we put that there to for the, make that air go through the radiator to help help it cool, cause these flat heads are easy to run more. And as, like we mentioned earlier, the cars came out with the gear shift on the column, which was the first year Ford done that, and also the seal beams and the hydraulic brakes compared to mechanical. I'm just going to start that thing.